I got the other friend around, same to the epoxy last night, and then put some uh, HP 5311 Tamco primer on it. And, uh, this fender, and both of them actually, I primed the uh, inside the headlight area and the uh, way around the back side of the fender there and the jams first. And rather than taping off all this, I just went ahead and scuffed the whole top side of it. And I'll let two or three light coats of primer fly all the way over the top of that. And uh, it's blocked out really nice. And I will say this. The HP 5300 series primer does adhere to bare metal extremely well. Um, it's working even better than the Matrix. The Matrix I've never had really any problems out of, but I've noticed that on bare metal, even though if you DA it with 80 grit, and then come back and try to scuff the epoxy with 80 grit, once you break through the epoxy and get out of the metal, it actually kind of tears loose. It will feather edge with 180 pretty good, and it feather edges with 320 really good. You don't feel any edges. In the past, I painted over it. I haven't seen any halos, any lines, no swelling. And knock on wood, nobody's ever come back to me and said anything about anything peeling. But I will say this, I've used the white maker epoxy on the other fender over there, and um, there were areas on it whenever uh, I got down to the, when I broke through the bare metal, it would actually kind of start ripping loose if I used 80 grit. So, with that being said, I was worried about it, and it did cost me a lot of time and money, but I went ahead and just took an 80 grit on DA and took all the white epoxy off, and I put three coats of HP 5311 on that last night, and the jams was done on that other fender and this one. Oh, about a week ago, a little more. But, um, I've been blocking this with 180 grit on some various different blocks here. I've used a uh, three and long board there that I've had since 1993 or 94. And I've got some various, I don't know what name brand of block that is. I got it ages ago, but it's a flexible one. You can kind of curve it. I believe it's got a piece of steel in it. But you can form it to the shape of got an egg-shaped burr for a fender, but I did not use that on this fender, but so far I've used the square block, and I've got a little round one there, I've used that, and I've been using this one. They've been blocking out good. Now, what I wanted to show here is um, the E-code on this. Now, this fender, it looked really straight everywhere. The only problems I had seen there was a ding here, which I took a hammer and dolly and got that the best I could. It needs to be body worked. There's still a slight little ding right there that needs to be filled up a little bit. And this area right here is where the back side, I don't know if you can see it much, but you can't really see it. That brace was pinch welded there. And, um, it actually caused high spots right there and down through here. And you can see that it caused a little low area there. It's got a low area out through there. But um, also something else I wanted to show. You see there, there was a little ding. And I don't know if the camera picks it up. I've blocked it quite a bit. There's some slight grinder marks there. That was done from auto metal direct. But um, the e-code on these is very thin. And I've just been using 180 grit, like I said, on the box. And you can see, you know, the little imperfections. Now, the e-coat is, you know, a, a satin or semi-gloss, whatever you want to call it. You can see some dents in it, but, um, like, all this area right through here, and you can clearly see that there are low spots in it. But with the naked eye on the e-coat, didn't really see them. Now, of course, clear is going to be shinier. And if you cut and buff it, it's going to be flat, like a piece of glass, and it's going to show every little imperfection. So, the main reason why I'm doing this video is to show you that I'm um, using a block on this, blocking it. 
as I was saying, by using a block on it and blocking it, um, you get all the little imperfections out of there. Even though that e-coat is thin and you didn't think there was much on there, when that black is left in the low spots, it's filling up part of the low spot. And the key thing here, as I've said before, you don't want to block too far because if you keep blocking and trying to cut this black out of here, well, all you're doing is making the metal flex and you still have a low spot. If you leave that e-coat there, even though it's as thin as it is, it's filling up some of the imperfection. So, anyway, uh, the worst part of that was about the spender actually was right through here, all the way down. And I just assume it's just the way the metal was stamped. It was ripply and um, it kind of curves inward, you know. There's a high point here and a high point there and it dips in a little bit. I'm sure every fender out there that's ever been made with a body line cinder or that's going to be the same way. But anyway, it's not so bad to where I honestly don't think I need to skim coat the whole thing with body filler. I'm just going to, you know, put, you know, four, possibly five coats of the HP 5311 on it, let it dry a few days. Um, and then I'm going to start working on the rest of the car. And I'm going to hang these on there and I'm going to block them, get it all straight with it on the car, and then take them off. I'm going to paint the hood and the fenders and the trunk off the car. Uh, the doors, I haven't really decided. I really don't want to take them off and readjust them. I'm thinking about leaving them on there and uh, painting because I can open the doors up wide enough and get around it. But that's a little video here that I was just wanting to show you. I still need to block the bottom part down there. I haven't even touched it at all. But uh, just wanted to show you that even though the fender looks pretty straight, if you just was to sand this by hand and paint it, you know, if you're super picky or you want to show quality job, all these little black areas you see are low spots. And like right there in that area, that's quite a bit of rippling going on. And uh, it was the same way down there on the bottom. Actually, there's a, a decent low spot right here. I'm going to put a straight edge on it and see how bad it looks. If it's really thin, like if it's no deeper than a piece of paper or construction paper, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to scuff up in the middle of it, make sure it's sanded good. And then put the five coats of primer on it. Let it dry while I do the rest of the car and then we'll block it out and see how it goes. Hopefully it all blocks out good and we don't need any more primer. Right there is that one dent I was talking about. You see it's still got a shiny spot in the middle. That, like I said, I'm going to get a straight, a straight edge on it also and see how it looks. But, um, uh, this video being pieced together, pieced together with the other one is going to be right about nine minutes long, so I'm going to have to splice them together and then upload them to YouTube. But hopefully what I'm showing here helps you all out. Leave a thumbs up, like the video, leave a comment, ask questions. And as always, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.